Welcome back, gentlemen, to what is probably my favorite day of the year. I've been training all summer for this, the annual big boy motorcycle beatdown ride. We've done this annually up on Fuji. The first time I went was with my brother-in-law 20 years ago. This is an annual ride. Uh, I come at, came out of it with a hernia for dragging my, bikes, my bike over top of all of the trees. But things are different now. I'm a much stronger and better rider with a lot better bike of some of the hardest, most exposed, difficult mountain terrain it's the hardest thing I've ever done. So let me show you how I set up my bike, the gear I'm taking. Uh, we'll be leaving here in about 15. I had just a few minutes for a quick video. A few changes to the bike since the last video. I've got uh, one gallon of extra mixed gas on board. That gives me a total of three and a half gallons of a range of about 160 miles. So that, that always does me, no problem. Um, what have I done here? New quad lock here. I don't know, I don't think I'll have this mounted on the more difficult terrain. You know, it's not gonna hold up there. I, I hit here on my chest a lot on harder things, but I can simply pop it off. But I do use my phone for navigating a lot. So we'll try it. Um, I've got backup here, the trail tech and on my watch. Uh, I added uh, a new headlight. My old headlight kind of fell to pieces. So I upgraded to the rigid light, uh, but it drew so much power. I had to uh, rewind the stator. So I, I switched the whole bike over to DC. It was AC-DC split. Uh, now it's strictly DC, 100 watt stator. Now, no problem. Um, I can run at an idle. The, the, this will not burn the battery down. Two position switch, which is nice because this thing is vicious bright. You'll never be able to tell here, but it's unbelievably bright and it has two modes. So switch there, cleaned up, um, start, kill switch over on one just to clean up the handlebars a little bit um new mount for here for the trail tech this is the new billet mount the old ones only lasted a year and i have to replace them every year because they would shake and wear the contact pins out so this is billet uh, with a hard screw so no problem um got a full wrap of dingo abs fort guards as well as i forget who makes these but they're made in britain but they've got 60 percent more coverage on the fork tubes Right there. So I've got a lot invested in the Cref forks. So all that is as protected as I can get. Also added, um, I've got a compression dampener underneath there, a new valving I added. So that what that guard right there kind of protects that somewhat, that sure beast. Uh, what else did I do? I did some other things. All rigged up uh, gearing um, for hard enduro. So I run a 12 in the front. Uh, from the 13, I typically run a 1252. Now, this being the TE300, it has kind of a strange gear configuration. Six gears in the transmission, but the first gear is really, really low. So that spread between first and second is too far. So I basically eliminate it by going with the 1252 and start on second. So second, third, fourth um, are way, way geared down now. TMD design, that's all much tougher, bomber-proof, uh, tougher stuff than I had before. Uh, grabbers, giant loop tank bag that just has fuel in it. Grabbers on the front. I, I guess you guys have seen most of it. Oh, brakes. Upgraded the brakes uh, to solid rear disc. I, it's so steep and so treacherous. I've had bake, brakes overheat and cook uh, up there before. So I went to the solid disc with the titanium bolts, solid steel sprockets as well. The sprockets and chain are much tougher uh, than what I had on before. So the general idea here is to make sure that it's not going to, you're, you're, you're trying to mitigate anything that's going to break. Uh, and you know, that that's the main thing. So this bike is six years old now. Um, and I know everything that's good, that breaks and pretty well squared away. Got rid of the uh, bolt on, the bolts through the uh, radiator guards and just went with kickstand rubbers. This way when I hit trees or, or brush rather than breaking and, and tearing the plastic out it's got some stretch in it and then a safety wired extra shifter lever on there i don't do a full wrap skid plate anymore like i used to because it just picks up too much too, too much weight rocks and dirt and such and i like you know the pipe is kind of there to to be the sacrificial piece i have reinforced with this blue piece right here the flange where it goes in because you can break these but you know, the way I look at it, if you dent or ding up a pipe, it's kind of the cost of part of the a consumable. Uh, carbon up cover, S3, power valve adjuster. I think maybe I showed those. But yeah, I think we're looking good. As far as gear wise, 
It's cold, be a high of 71 today, so we're gonna go lightweight. I'll go with the F3 carbon. And for, for lenses, if I'm only gonna take one and I have to go light today, I'll prefer this kind of mix. It's kind of a, got a little bit of a tint to it, not quite clear, but gives you a little bit of coverage in the sun. And then the carbon helmets are light. We'll go enduro jacket today because it is cold. And two pair of gloves. I'll take a pair of winter gloves and then, which I probably won't wear, but if I spend the night out, I like to have those. And then all my safety equipment in my main pack with three liters of water and water filtration. Because we'll go through a lot of water today. ACR, satellite link up for uh, if we get into trouble, um, backup, Garmin, uh, Mrs. W and friends and family will be tracking all of our movements. So this will pin every 10 minutes so they'll know where we're at. Retrieval kit, which I'll probably strap that on my handlebars, which is a, a two to one, four to one. Uh, for bikes that go over the edge and comms but basically i think that's it so the boys should be over here and we'll roll but uh, i'll try to get some footage on the way it's going to be it's a bit of a a struggle uh, so i don't know how much footage i'll actually get but i'll do what i can we're about two miles in we had our first breakdown what happened mr mcabee uh changed my battery two days ago must not have tightened up the seat bolt seat bolt fell out I was riding standing, I sat down to mount it, and there no was seat. no seat. <laughs> so I stopped and scrambled down the hill, and now I zip tied it back. All right, so we're good. You forgot we're, to put the seat bolt back in. So we are, uh, we're heading up, and hopefully that's the worst of the problems today. Let's hope. We have yep. a big day. Yep, yep. We are eight miles in. Uh, we made it up on top of the first ridge. That's eight miles of solid, steep climbing. How much elevation did we gain? Uh, so we've done my think says nine miles and doesn't give me an elevation yet. so uh, what their next destination so 4500 now is right over there i'm going to ride right up there to the base of that big rock goodness it's amazing how you feeling sweet super good good energy oh yeah i'll bet we see some mountain goats today maybe that's what really burns you down on these rides is you're just constantly going up and down, you know, like 3,000, 3,500 foot climb, up and down, up and down, crossing rivers. It's just uh, really rough on you. We made it up on top. Mount Fuji from the west. Super windy up on the ridge, so we came down here for lunch, hiding behind a little grove of uh, noble firs. What do we have for lunch today? I'm pretty lightweight. I, I, I kind of go minimalistic on these trips because they're so physical, so high protein snacks nothing super tasty David came down and took the wrong turn so I just hit him on the radio here he comes this is his first first time out here what do you think mr. McAbee I think the other way around is a no-go for kids that was gnarly. Let's see how McAbee does here. <laughs> you gotta commit. Uh, so this is a, a, a trail marker. They put out several dozens or hundreds of these every summer. And then dirt bikers, if you're lucky, get paid to go fetch them. And you collect them on the ride like raccoon tails when you're out hunting <laughs> and the more of them you get the more you get so mm -hmm. cody personally collected like a dozen i only got this one <laughs> but we'll be getting our rewards baby <laughs> whoop, whoop, trail 2022 10, bu 10 bucks a piece right oh easy that covers my gas easy for sure well today after the next morning just unloaded the bike everything worked well i didn't have any problems I went down maybe half a dozen times or so but nothing major just kind of falling over on the side of a trail or things got narrow things i did notice uh things that did work well the solid rear disc brake uh is was way better 
much much better less uh, effort on my hand uh, so that's nice having that uh, that stops better um, I mean everything just worked flawless uh, one problem I have this mount was good I thought in the rougher terrain that I'm I might knock it off or hit it I did hit it with my chest a couple times but it's with that isolator on there it's so flexible and it seemed to hold up uh, one thing I did not do right is this this I uh, didn't lock tight this bolt and with that it's got that spring pressure on it and that un unscrews really quickly I had to stop like every 15 minutes and, and tighten that with my finger so I'll make that correction but that was good um, the light was excellent the new stator excellent no battery problems um, yeah just didn't have any issue uh, bike was flawless riding that 18 inch I haven't been on an 18 inch 18 inch rear wheel for the whole summer i've been riding a 19 with a lower profile tire on it well what a big difference that made this this um this tire this is probably the best tire i've ever used the gekoda uh super soft gummy compound it just it's like cheating and the michelin up front man that is a good the star cross soft probably the best not probably definitely the best tire combo that I've used for hard enduro with the tubeless. I ran, I didn't even air down. I ran uh, seven, no, I ran six and eight. Six PSI and eight PS, eight in the front. I thought if I got into trouble or some real gnarly stuff, I would go, I can go down to two or three. I never had to, didn't make any difference. The Crest suspension was fabulous. This is the first time that I've ridden it in, in its soft setting. So I softened everything up, fork and shocks. That combination, it felt so different when I got on the bike, the wheel and the soft setting, the soft suspension to the soft setting that I felt, felt like something was wrong with it. I kept stopping like the first five minutes and, and like looking around, like it felt so different. It was just so plush and squishy. And then I got into it and it was excellent. That with the flex bars, these right here, these bars move on these isolators. And then I have solid brass inserts in there for mass. They take all the vibration out of the bike. It's as gentle and smooth. It's like an electric bike with noise. But yeah, so no problems. Excellent tire, great. One of the easiest trips for me. This is the first time I've actually trained for the trip. I've been riding all summer. My skill has gotten a lot better. My conditioning is really, really good uh, because I ride every day. And uh, just the, the strong core I've built, just overall body conditioning has been amazing. I, I look at this bike as my gym because I, I'm not, I mean, I know I, I've got to go and, you, you know, you got to do resistance training. You got to keep yourself strong and your bones strong. So I thought, well, I'll just, this will be my gym. So I make it a priority. I get out and I ride up there. Um, you know, so maybe I'll go out for 25 miles, sometimes a hundred, 150, but uh, it's something I really look forward to. It's really good for your body, really good for your mind. No internet up there, no distractions. Just It causes you to focus solely on one thing for multiple hours, and that's a hard. It's hard to find a place where you can do that, where your mind is not wandered by all your cares and responsibilities. So that's why I like it.